In the year 2093, an unknown monster emerged and brought destruction upon humanity, throwing the world into chaos. Crime raids also began to soar annually, adding to the turmoil. Two years later, another disaster caused by humans rendered all world governments powerless. In this state of panic, the first superhero names Zero emerged. Zero single-handedly defeated various supervillains and monsters, even decapitating the monstrous king. He later revealed crucial information about the origins of these creatures and criminals, becoming a beacon of hope for all of mankind. By the year 2100, several other heroes stepped forward from the shadows, gradually reducing both monster sightings and crime rates, thereby restoring peace and prosperity to the world. However, the hero who turned humanity's dream into reality vanished without a trace. At the present time, Lin Ji, a laid-back young man, heads outside determined to find a job. His attention is momentarily drawn to a TV screen announcing the release date of the fifth sequel in Zero's thrilling adventures. Surprisingly, Ji believes people would mock the legendary hero if they knew he was looking for a job. While passing by, Ji witnesses a group of bandits disrupting the city's peace. To prevent further damage, a group of low-ranking heroes arrive on the scene. Among them is a B-class villain who, upon transforming, easily overpowers the heroes. In the midst of the chaos, John Chen, an E-class hero, appears. Driven by his own recklessness, John Chen uses his eccentric scientific gadgets to attack the villain, only to end up injuring himself. Witnessing Zhan Chen's determination, Ji decides to take action and defeats the villain with a single powerful blow. After vanquishing the villain, Ji returns home to his sister's scolding for his laziness. Their conversation is interrupted by Zhan Chen, who overhears their situation. He offers Ji an opportunity to become his assistant and guides him to the hero registration process. Ji's physical test begins with the examiner named Yatin instructing him to hold him off for three minutes. Arrogantly, Ji claims he will defeat Yatin. The battle intensifies and Yatin soon realizes Ji possesses extraordinary strength. After a fierce struggle, Ji emerges victorious. However, the situation takes a turn for the worse when he is tasked with a written exam. After enduring a severe beating, Yatin wakes up in the hospital, struggling to recall his own defeat. To his surprise, Handong Monyu delivers shocking news. Ji possesses class as strength but lacks intellect. Meanwhile, Ji and Zhan wait anxiously at the exam site for Ji's scores. Unfortunately, Ji only manages to score 13 points in the written exam, becoming a subject of ridicule among the rookies, given the test's basic nature. Frustrated with the situation, Ji vents his anger to Zhan, expressing his belief that weak heroes are worthless. While Ji contemplates his disappointment, he witnesses the Golden Triangle, a group of bullies targeting a new hero. Initially, Ji dismisses the situation, but when they insult Zero, both Ji and Zhan become enraged, prompting them to take action. After dealing with the bullies, a hero named Shizen, known as the Unlucky Ghost, introduces himself. He shares that nobody has spoken to him in years, as all low-ranking heroes fear his ability, despite being an E-rank hero himself. Touched by his situation, Ji invites Shizen to join his team, bringing the hero to tears. Later, Shizen reveals that his ability brings extreme bad luck to everyone around him. To illustrate this, he recounts his troubled childhood, sharing that he was an orphan who unintentionally caused destruction wherever he went. However, he was once saved by Zero, which inspired his determination to become a hero. In a moment of clumsiness, Shizen accidentally breaks one of the pillars, leading to the destruction of the Grand Zero statue. In the same incident, Yam Ching also sustained injuries, but fortunately, the doctors confirm that he is in good health. As Yam Ching makes a swift recovery, the team focuses on tracking down a group of C-class villains involved in an illegal trade, to exchange a slimy monster. As the heroes intervene, they initially gain the upper hand using their intellect. However, the situation takes a turn when the villains activate the slimy monster, rendering the hero's weapons useless. The monster targets Shuzin due to his bad luck, but Ji swiftly jump in and sends the monster flying into the downtown area by mistake. Chaos ensues as the monster rampages through the city, swallowing anyone in its path. Ji uses his super speed to race to the monster's location. He relies on his strength to tear the creature apart, only to discover that it quickly regenerates. At that moment, Zhang catches up with Ji and advises him to avoid using his strength due to the presence of innocent civilians. Zhang explains that the only way to defeat the slimy monster is to purify the water inside it. Surprisingly, John's technology comes to the rescue as he utilizes his jet boots to attack the monster, exposing its blind spot. Then, he directly confronts the monster and employs his newly developed water purifier, leading to a victorious outcome. To everyone's surprise, they find a strange girl within the slimy monster. Later, Handon Monu provides more information, revealing that several charities have set up orphanages for underprivileged children. But in reality, these facilities have been used for human experimentation. 
She discloses that the little girl they discovered was the only successful experiment, while the rest of the children were brutally killed. G, overwhelmed with anger, releases an unimaginable pressure that affects both Dong and Zhan. He questions why the heroes didn't take decisive action and eliminate the alleged criminals. However, he quickly regains control of himself and apologizes for his outburst. Dong clarifies all of Ji's doubts by explaining that she personally conducted an investigation and discovered that Aoyang Ru, the president of the Hero Association, is the mastermind behind these heinous acts. The following day, Ji takes the little girl to Lin Wan's place. He explains the entire situation to Wan and asks her to take the girl shopping. Meanwhile, in an alleyway, the Golden Tigers discuss being summoned by the president of the Hero Association, triggering Ji's memory of Dong's warning. Dong had mentioned that the little girl is a valuable test subject for the genetic evolution companies, and they are likely to send assassins to capture her. Refusing to comply with the Golden Tigers' demands, Ji swiftly defeats them. After returning to the mall, Wan affectionately calls the little girl Mumu and pleads with Ji to let her stay with them. After much persuasion from Wan, Ji finally agrees. He instructs Yan King and Zan to inform Dong about the situation immediately. Meanwhile, the enraged president of the Hero Association, aided by other corrupt heroes, devises a new plan to capture Mumu. During the night, the top assassin of the Hero Association confronts Ji, revealing his strength to be a Class A. However, upon realizing Ji's immense power, the assassin resorts to a new drug that enhances his physical condition, elevating his strength to Class S. Despite the assassin's efforts, Ji effortlessly defeats him. Initially, Ji intends to send a message to the president for the assassin, but the foolish assassin threatens Wan and Mumu, triggering Ji's fury. Ji launches a brutal attack, swiftly killing the assassin and causing the destruction of half a mountain. Later, Ji returns home and tries to act as if nothing significant has occurred. In his thoughts, he recalls that the genetic evolution companies are set to meet with the president of the Hero Association in three days, based on Don's intel. With a mix of emotions swirling within him, Ji ponders the true purpose of a hero. Later, the group gathers with Dong to strategize their attack on the meeting between the genetic evolution companies and the president of the Hero Association. Dong has assembled a team of various heroes for this special mission, including the Ice Mage Xiao Yi who explains that their main objective is to capture a significant amount of madness potion before it is released into the market. However, Xiao Yi starts off on the wrong foot by insulting the guys and belittling them. Their dispute is quickly ended by Dong, who reveals that Shizen has already infiltrated the enemy headquarters on Paradise Island. As night falls, the intense battle between the heroes ensues, with both sides fighting to their fullest. Meanwhile, Xiao Yi prevents the men from escaping by shooting down their helicopter. However, the situation takes a dire turn when Xiao Yi is sniped mid-air by Zhu Liji, a top-ranking A-class hero on the president's payroll. All parties engage in a fearless battle, while Ji makes his way towards Mr. Gan from the Genetic Evolution Company. Dong confronts the president, leading to her getting injured in the process. On the other hand, Yan King saves Xiao Yi from Zhu Liji, but Xiao Yi falls into a trap set by the Genetic Evolution Company, a device called the X-Field designed to detain heroes. All parties suffer heavy injuries. Meanwhile, Ji utilizes his concealed weapon to fight against Mr. Gan. As the battle rages on, the president of the Hero Association delivers a fatal blow to Dong, reveling in his victory. However, Ji's demeanor quickly turns serious, and he effortlessly defeats Mr. Gan, even after the latter had used the new drug. Meanwhile, Zhu Lijia has trapped Xiao Yi and continues his relentless attack on Yan Qing. In a desperate attempt to save Xiao Ye, Yan Xing bravely confronts Zhu Liji but fails to defeat him. Enraged by Yan King's injuries, Xiao Ye taps into her powers to the fullest extent, freezing the X field and the surrounding area. In the midst of the chaos, Dong reveals her true intentions for a counterattack. She freezes the president of the Hero Association and calls upon Ji Lin for support. Without delay, Ji arrives and delivers a powerful punch, shattering Ouyang Ru's armor and impressing Dong with his strength. Feeling at a disadvantage, Ouyang Ru decides to use the new Madness Potion to enhance his strength to level S. However, despite the increase in power, Ouyang Ru is unable to land a single hit on Ji. He even employs his ancient art of footwork, which is rumored to be undetectable. After a one-sided battle that stretches on, Ji grows even more serious and finishes the fight with one decisive blow. The team gathers to celebrate their hard-earned victory. At that moment, Xiao Yi arrives, carrying the unconscious Yan Qing on her back. After the intense battle, both Zhang Chen and Yan Qing are taken to the hospital to receive treatment for their serious injuries. To everyone's surprise, Xiao Yi reveals her caring side as she personally feeds Yan Qing. Ji pays a visit to check on their health, and shortly after, Dong arrives with an announcement that she has arranged for special training through the Hero Association for their group. 
Yan Xing and Zhan Chen readily agreed to the training opportunity. However, Ji, in his usual arrogant manner, refuses, claiming that he is already strong enough. Xiao Yi becomes angered by his attitude and challenges him to a duel. The group gathers on the rooftop to witness the showdown, but no matter how hard they try, they can't keep up with Ji's lightning fast movements. In a final attempt, Dong unleashes her powerful ice field technique, but even that proves ineffective against Ji's incredible abilities. After demonstrating his superiority, Ji leaves to pick up Mu Mu. Meanwhile, a new president named Dong Yang is chosen to lead the Hero Association. Surprisingly, he is from the Dong family and happens to be Han Dong's older brother. In his welcome speech to the association, he addresses the members. Later, the president meets with Ji and the others, extending an invitation for Ji to join the Dong family. Ji immediately refuses without hesitation while the president attempts to intimidate him, showcasing his formidable mental strength. But Ji remains unfazed, remarking that the president's mental powers are still quite low. The new president commits a grave mistake by harming Ji's friends, igniting Ji's fury. In a display of his own mental power, Ji retaliates, causing the president to cough up blood. Realizing the consequences, the president orders Handong to test Ji's abilities, acknowledging that he is no ordinary individual and provoking him would have dire consequences. Meanwhile, at the research lab, Wan successfully conducts experiments on a dog, enhancing its intelligence and adaptive capabilities. Despite being warned to leave the lab due to the influence of the Dong and Aoyang families, Wan refuses to live as a coward. In another part of the story, Ji encounters Long Wenfeng's men stationed at the research lab, who are secretly monitoring his sister. Overpowering them, Ji unleashes his overwhelming power in a fit of rage. Simultaneously, Shizen finds himself at the Dong household, or Zi Hao, the young master of the Aoyang family, arrives and claims Handong as his future wife. Handong is coerced into getting into Zi Hao's car, prompting the leave of muscles to intervene and rescue her. Despite Handong's attempt to defuse the situation by explaining that she volunteered to be Zi Hao's fiancé, the League of Muscles refuses to listen, provoking Zi Hao into attacking them with his wind blade. Witnessing the chaos, Handong pleads with Zi Hao to spare everyone, with her tears flowing uncontrollably. After thwarting the attack of the self-regenerating robots, Ji rushes to the hospital to check on his injured friends. Alongside Yan Qing and Zhen Chan, they devise a plan to rescue Handong from her forced engagement to Zi Hao. The team discovers that the engagement ceremony is set to take place soon, fueling Ji's determination to save Handong. On the day of the ceremony, Ji, Yan Qing, and Zhen Chan infiltrate the mansion where the event is being held. Inside, Zi Hao mistreats Handong, coercing her into divulging information about Ji and his fire spirit sword. In Handong's room, Ji confronts her and admires her wedding dress. He implores her to leave with him, recognizing her significance in his life. However, Handong remains steadfast in her decision to stay and protect their loved ones. Ji expresses his frustration, emphasizing that he won't allow anyone else to make sacrifices on their behalf. Ji and Handong flee together, but their escape takes a dramatic turn when Yan Qing and Zhen Chan come under attack from robots controlled by Zi Hao. As the chaos unfolds, Zi Hao confronts Ji, accusing him of stealing his wife. Ji, however, taunts the nobility of the two prestigious families, highlighting their reliance on women to maintain their honor. In an attempt to settle their dispute in a traditional manner, the two men agree to a duel reminiscent of days gone by. Ji offers to hand over his fire spirit sword to Zi Hao if the latter emerges victorious. In return, Zi Hao promises to allow Ji and Handong to depart without any further trouble once Ji wins. The entire event is witnessed by the influential families who eagerly anticipate this legendary battle between the strongest among the younger generation. Prior to commencing the duel, Ji stows away his fire spirit sword and instead wields an extravagant spear. Zi Hao, displaying confidence, boldly declares that his finger alone will suffice. With great intensity, the match begins, with both combatants initially exhibiting only a fraction of their power, which gradually escalates. Ji, after engaging in some playful maneuvers, becomes more serious. He delivers a decisive strike that sends Zi Hao crashing to the ground, leaving the elders astounded by Ji's strength. Ji then executes a powerful dragon slash, inflicting severe injuries upon Zi Hao. Frustrated by the situation, Zi Hao resorts to unleashing a forbidden curse, but even that fails to harm Ji. In response, Ji unleashes a final dragon slash, bringing the duel to a swift conclusion with one devastating blow. Ji's happiness shatters when a man claiming to be a god appears and takes control of the entire area with his mind. This self-proclaimed deity demands Ji's surrender, wanting to control the entire world under his rule. Refusing to entertain the absurdity, Ji mocks the man as a fake god, infuriating him greatly. The battle turns gruesome as both sides engage. Ji utilizes his spear, landing a few initial strikes, 
but the so-called god proves to be formidable too. He employs various light-based techniques to attack G, but each of his assaults is met with a counter from G. The supposed god then employs a skill called divine erosion, triggering memories of G's past self. Overwhelmed by boiling rage and immense power, G undergoes a transformation becoming zero. He proclaims that it's been a while since he last used the zero technique called judgment. Unleashing a relentless barrage of judgment, G brings the god to his knees. In the final moments, the god questions G's moral compass, claiming that Zero doesn't understand the pain of weakness. In response, Zero reveals his second form, known as Redemption. After utilizing the initial form of the Zero technique, Zero unleashes Redemption, ultimately vanquishing the self-proclaimed god. In his final moments, the defeated god queries Zero about the source of his strength. Zero responds by removing his shirt, revealing a multitude of scars and wounds acquired throughout his years of battles. He goes on to explain that his body has been battered, but he refuses to let his younger sister worry about him. Zero advises the god not to refer to him as Zero anymore since he has long forsaken the life of a hero. As the god fades away into thin air, he reflects on his original intention of freeing the world from murder and sin, acknowledging that he strayed from that path. He then appreciates the fact that his demise came at the hands of Zero. Later, at the seaside, Ji reunites with Handong. She discloses her plans to depart from the town in order to become an instructor at the Hero Academy. With a kiss, she bids farewell to Ji. Meanwhile, Ji is resolute in remaining by his sister's side until the end of his own journey. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing to the channel and stay tuned for more quality uploads.